Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Gran Turismo 7 Daily Race, Race and Strategy Guide and after last week's very long race at Spa in Group 3 with the dynamic weather things have returned a little bit more back to normal for this week's race we're at Watkins Glen, long course and we are in the Group 4 machinery definitely not our first rodeo in this car and track combination but the settings are a little bit different to what we normally do normally this would be a fuel saver in Group 4 around Watkins Glen I can't really remember these settings being used uh, that we have here but they're familiar settings as well it's pretty much the same settings as we had at Autopolis and the kind of makeup of this race the way it's going to unfold is going to be very similar to that race as well but as it is we've got nine laps to get round tie at times five fuel at times one just the racing medium tires available that is a mandatory pit stop and there isn't actually any settings for this one just the brake balance being allowed whereas i think back in the topless we did actually have some setup so let's move in to the race action here starting at the back we have chose the ferrari 458 i was going to win the mclaren because it was p1 on the leaderboard I was thinking this is a tyre wear race, probably best to use a car that's good on the tyres but then I thought you know what we're doing this for a test, let's use a car that's not particularly good on the tyres, the Ferrari for some reason is very harsh on its front tyres compared to something like the McLaren or the NSX so if we can survive with the Ferrari in terms of tyre wear then you should be able to survive in any or pretty much any car. Uh, that's going to be competitive around here. Car choice wise is looking like maybe the Citroen, the McLaren and the Renault Megane Trophy, maybe the Alfa Romeo 4C as well are going to be your uh, most competitive cars around this combination just because they are very good on the tyres and as you're going to see that is all about the tyre wear in this one but getting this one underway we are up into P15 already as Muscavi has a little bit of an issue I'm not really entirely sure what went on here but we seen the gap between the two cars in front they were going a little bit slower than us and decided to take the risk of going down the middle and thankfully we have enough over speed to get uh, ahead of both those cars into the braking stone for the bus stop so nice start to this race indeed three positions made up in just a small number of corners can we make any more progress as this race goes on so jumping forward here to lap four and this seems like a good opportunity to start talking about the strategy for this one so we have caught up with this Italian in the McLaren and we are now starting to get held up now I could see from the tyre wear there already that we weren't going to have any problems getting this car to the end of the race on one set of tyres but I can also see that those tyres are not going to be in particularly good shape at the end but we are going to dive into the pits here now this is a pit lane you must practice a few times to make sure you get right you cannot cross that yellow line you don't even want to risk touching it because you will get a three second penalty and you have to make your decision on the tyres very quickly in this one indeed the car instantly appears in the box so you have to make your decision straight away now I choose not to change the tyres on this occasion 2.6 seconds is my stationary time if you do choose to change the tires what is going to be the gain so actually taking a little bit longer than i expected to get the tires changed 6.7 seconds so that's a 4.1 second gain for not changing the tires which is significant now apologies for the noises that are going on there my LAN cable seems to be connecting and disconnecting for some reason so unfortunately probably here on the playstation makes some silly noises there uh, through the microphone so apologies for that but overall your pit loss is going to be 18 seconds if you choose not to change the tyres and it's going to be 22 seconds if you do change the tyres and let's see what effect not changing the tyres is going to have on the car towards the end of the race and how those lap times are going to start dropping off now db cooper there in front of us i never really caught it when i was watching but he has picked up a three second penalty and that's probably for coming into the pitch do be careful on the exit as well because it can be uh, the car can kind of throw you off to the, the left hand side a little bit if you're not ready to take control once the, uh, the computer gives you back control of the car and you can be hit with a three second penalty for that as well so up into P11 on this one and we've got Willits Brothers behind us in a Bugatti Vero and now this car has changed the tyres, I had to go back to the replay just to make sure and see what Willits had done and it absolutely chewed through the tyres but I'll tell you what, seems to have some pace that's for sure because he blew past my car like it doesn't even exist and then jumping forward here to the end of the race we've caught up with Frank in the 
pink short McLaren. He's occupying my P Womble position. We did get a half decent run down towards the bus stop chicane, but we're never going to be able to make the move stick. And you can see that our front left tyre there has definitely seen better days, but enough trade there to not really have to worry too much. But the lap times have definitely dropped off by a good second per lap from maybe lap eight and nine onwards. But is it enough to make up the 4.1 seconds that you lose by changing the tyres? We'll discuss that in just a little minute. In terms of length of race time, you're looking at 17 and a half minutes, which is obviously quite a bit shorter than what we had last week and very much more towards the traditional fare of a daily race C. Let's talk about those strategy options now. Basically, you've got your two standard strategy options for a race that's set up like this. You've got your one stop with the no tyre change, and this is the one I'm going to recommend. Pick a car that's good on the tyres. McLaren, the Citroen, Alfa Romeo 4C, the Renault McGann Cockroach. They're all going to easily get to the end of the race without having to change the tyres. You're going to save 4.1 seconds in a lot of races. That's going to be a lot of time. These uh, Group 4 races do tend to be very close, so if you're losing 4.1 seconds, you could be losing 6 or 7 positions. And whilst your tyres might be better at the end, it's going to be very difficult to start making those moves, but you could also have some fun. Obviously, not changing the tyres also gives you the flexibility of when you want to make that pit stop as well. The other option for you is to do the one stop with the tyre change, so you're going to stop on laps 3, 4 or 5, change the tyre, it's going to cost you 4.1 seconds, again I think that's a lot of time particularly in higher up splits where these group 4 races are very tight, but you are going to have a tyre advantage at the end on a track where it is possible to overtake, but yeah that's your two options, for me it's the one stop with the no tyre change with a car that's good on the tyres, it's definitely not a bad race this folks, that just doesn't quite have the appeal of Spab dynamic weather, there's no two doubts about it. But yeah, we'll definitely give this one a bash a few times over the course of the week. And as I said, it's by no means a bad race. And hopefully this video has been useful in some way, shape or form. If it has, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Catch you in the next one. Goodbye now.